Hello, everyone. Thanks for the opportunity to present. What I'm going to show today is some work we have done recently for Australia and Africa, two continental scale platforms supported by Open Data Cube. My name is Fang Yuan. I'm an Earth Observation Scientist working in the Digital Earth Australia program at Geoscience Australia. And I'm also a member of the Digital Earth Africa establishment team. So what is Digital Earth Australia? It is a government-funded program aiming to make satellite imagery accessible and easy to use to both government and industry users. For our technical development, we take a user-led approach. That is, we work closely with users to develop and iterate capabilities and products that will meet their needs. And at the same time, to maintain focus of the program, we follow strategic guidance of an interdepartmental committee which has representatives from across the government. If we can do this for all of Australia, sure, we should be able to do it for a continent that's only about four times as big. So now we have Digital Earth Africa, built with the same technology. Geoscience Australia is currently leading the establishment phase, but this program is designed to be hosted in Africa it will eventually be operated by teams entirely based in Africa. The program is guided by the governing board and a technical advisory committee. We're already working with partners in Africa to make sure that we focus our efforts on addressing key challenges faced by the African communities. Now let's move on to technology. Both of these programs are supported by the same underlying architecture with Open Data Cube at the core. This is implemented at continental scale for data management and analysis. For Digital Earth Australia, storage and compute resources are provided by both the National Computational Infrastructure in Australia and the Amazon Web Services. And the Digital Earth Africa is entirely cloud-based. I'd also like to point out that from a user's perspective, it doesn't necessarily matter where the data is hosted or even what the underlying technology is. What we care about is the stability and efficiency and whether the tools are easy to use. So for these platforms, we've built a number of interfaces allowing users to query, visualize and analyze the data or use it in their own tools. The similarity between these two platforms also means that the interface to data and analysis capabilities are similar, and the method we develop for one platform can be quite easily transferred to the other. Among these interfaces, I'll expand on our shared analysis environment, the DEA Sandbox. It is a Jupyter Hub environment that is deployed in the cloud. It is accessible anywhere in a browser and free to sign up. Some instructions can be found on this wiki page. And when you sign in, the environment is preloaded with ready-to-use notebooks. These include introduction to Python and the ODC API, how to load and visualize data, and also frequently used code and real-world analysis examples. We now have more than 300 users from different organizations that use this environment to interact with DEA data and it has quickly become the go-to place for our own team members. Now, this capability has been implemented for DE Africa, continuously being improved to cater to the needs of different users. An example for our own product development approach is the land cover mapping project. We all know how important and useful land cover maps are. The goal is to do it consistently for the continent using the Landsat archive. The classes we use are based on FAO's land cover classification system. This means they will make sense for anywhere around the world. And because the method is developed using the ODC API, it is applicable to any ODC implementation with Landsat data. This work is done in collaboration with Aberystwyth University in Wales. And the sandbox is where different teams across the world use to access the same data and tools for development and testing. Once the algorithm is optimized, this workflow is containerized and deployed for the continent. Another important learning experience we had recently, working with industry through the DEA Labs program, 
in this first round, we funded three projects, all of them for agricultural applications. We knew from the beginning that cloud-based technology is important. And in the end, to help these projects, we accelerated the transition of some of our data into the cloud platform. I'll take one of these projects as an example. Thiebaud Labs is an agricultural data analytics company based in Queensland, Australia. As part of their core business, they provide estimated pasture biomass, cattle and beef producers. For this service, remote sensing data is fed into a predictive machine learning model and results are aggregated at a paddock scale to track available feed. As you can imagine, high resolution data and frequent coverage are critical. In this DEA Labs project, the company developed a number of tools to work with DEA's Sentinel-2 surface reflectance data made available in the cloud. Coupled with AWS Lambda functions, this allows on-demand end-to-end processing that can be triggered at any time and is very cost-effective. So the key outcome is that this funding and technical support provided by DEA has allowed the company to undertake research and development of a new solution. And given the success, they will continue to develop the framework and integrate it with more applications. In my last example, I come to the data we provide, a super exciting new development for D-Africa. We're now providing access to Sentinel-2 surface reflectance data for the whole African continent. This collection includes surface reflectance data from ESA, additional data processed with the Sentinel Core software by Synergize. And what's worth emphasizing is that we've worked with Element 84 to convert all these data into cloud-optimized GeoTIFF format. This means they can be efficiently accessed through streaming or windowed feed. We also provide metadata that is compliant with the spatial temporal asset catalog specification. So these data sets can be easily indexed and discovered. Finally, it's been evaluated as CEOS analysis ready data, as we want to make sure that we're providing certified quality data to our users. Such an approach is consistent with the upcoming Landsat Collection 2 release. And we're also working with collaborators to make Sentinel-1 normalized radar backscatter available through our platform. I'd like to end my presentation with this animation made from Sentinel-2 imagery. At 10 meter resolution, even the relatively small paddocks can be monitored as the crops grow and are being harvested. And imagine now we have the entire continent watched in this detail every few days. However, let's keep in mind that this is only a start. To deliver our promise, we need to build technology to enable talented people, as many as possible, to turn these pretty pictures into real solutions that will benefit the society. User is always at the center of our programs. Thank you.